Hi, my name is Alice Kuipers and I'm a writer who lives and works in Saskatoon. And today I want to talk to you about how you can make a character come alive for a reader. I've published 10 or 11 books now. And one of the things I find that's really important when I'm working on a book is for me to really feel a good sense of who my character is. And so one of the things I do before I even start writing the book, and it's a little bit strange, but I don't really care, is I sit down with the pretend character and I get them to answer a series of questions. And I've shared the link below of the questions that I use, but I actually ask the questions as if the character is able to answer them themselves. So it's a little bit strange because the person's not real, but for me, it makes that person feel more real. So I might ask simple questions like, what's your favorite food? Or what artwork do you like to look at? Or what books do you enjoy reading? But I also like to get to know a bit more detail about who that person is by really thinking deeply about the bigger questions. If they could travel anywhere in the world, where would they go? What do they most want in life? What's something really embarrassing or awful that's happened to them in their past? Are they sad about something? And the more questions I ask, the more that character starts to have interests and objects, perhaps, that they would have in their room. So I start to create the space around the character, too. So something I might think about quite a lot is what would be in that character's bag? What type of bag would that character take to school, maybe? What would that character have on their bedside table? Where would that character sleep? What type of wallpaper or paint or posters would they have on their wall? Are they messy or are they very tidy? I might think about what that character would pack if they were going to go on a holiday or a trip. Getting to know the objects that a person owns gives you a really good sense, perhaps, of who that person might be. Like if a kid owned a ton of computer games and was perhaps someone who owned a skateboard and had all the um, really fun things that you might need for like creating a climbing wall in your yard. You might see that that person was perhaps going to be into parkour, like one of my characters in my novel, uh, Me and Me. Or maybe your character, like my character Polly Diamond in one of my books for younger readers, really likes the colour turquoise and so she's got turquoise glasses and turquoise sneakers and she also has a turquoise pen and it's her favourite thing. So getting to know those things gives you a really good image in your mind and a good sense of who your character might be. The other thing I quite often do is I try to find a picture of someone who looks a bit like the character in my head. So I might search on the internet for a character who looks a bit like the person in my mind. Because at this stage, I start to have quite a strong visual idea of who the character is. So for Polly Diamond, I actually met someone who looked a lot like Polly in my head and then talked to her a bit about what her life was like to get a bit of a broader sense. If your character needs to be living through something you have no way of living through, which happens a lot to writers, the other thing you can do is start asking questions. Maybe one of your grandparents, you could call and ask them what life was like when they were younger, if you wanted to write a historical story. So you can start to contextualize what your character's world might be like. What would your character do on a regular day? How would they spend that time would they get up right away and jump out of bed or would they perhaps spend their time praying on their knees I mean you see two very different characters right away there so once I've done all that work to get to know a bit about what my character likes and doesn't like and what they own and what their space looks like and what they like to do with their time then I start thinking about the most important thing when it comes to writing a character that I think I can share with you. 
And that is that when you put a character on the page, the most important thing you can do is make your character do something. So all that work you've done to get to know your character and all that interview so that you know they don't like peanut butter and they love sushi, let's say, that's not what you write. You know that so that you can make your character come to life, but then you have to get your character doing things so that they come to life in the mind of your reader. So let's say your character is sitting there and reading a book. That's them doing something, but it's a bit hard to get to know what sort of person they might be. What if they were reading a book and it was about a celebrity and they suddenly started taking pictures and posting those on Instagram? You would get a sense, okay, this person is interested in social media. What if they were reading a book and their brother came in and interrupted them and they threw the book at their brother? You get a sense of someone who's very impatient. What if they're reading the book and they start tearing out the pages and burning it and you see it's their old diary? You see how by making the character do stuff with the book, you give us opportunity to get to know them. So the way this works is that we don't like to be told what to think as people. We like to work it out for ourselves. We're all smart readers and we can get to know people our own way. So I could tell you as many times as I like that I'm a very nice person, but if I walked up to you and slapped you around the face, I could be telling you I'm nice, but you wouldn't think I was nice because I'd done something really, truly awful, right? So when you see your characters doing things, good things or bad things, and I would never hit anyone around the face, but those, those are the ways that you get to see who somebody is by what they do. So your character can even say to other people they're a great person, but if they knock something over or hurt somebody or deliberately mean or the other way around, they don't think they're a good person, but you see them doing something kind. That's how you get to know your characters as readers, as the people who want to invest in your story. So this is how you write a good character, I think. You really, really get to know them first. You keep that information so that when you're putting your character in your book, you have it so that you know, okay, they're gonna eat some lunch, they're totally not gonna have peanut butter sandwiches. And then you make your character do stuff. And as you make your character do stuff, you make that character come to life in the reader's imagination. You make that character feel like their friend. You make that character feel like somebody they care about or somebody they hate so that they cannot stop reading. Good luck with that. I hope it goes really well. And thank you for listening. <laughs>